okay so in today's class we'll be starting on various types of measuring instruments so the first set of measuring measuring instruments that we'll be dealing are analog dc instruments and that is instruments that will measure a dc currents dc voltages and resistances and we'll be uh, interested in instrument that will use an analog principle that is their display is not digital and since they're analog the indicating mechanism in almost all cases is a uh, so they are indicating instruments in almost all pay all places and the display element is a pointer on a scale and the deflection of the pointer is what is the indication okay now uh, the first question that uh, we would like we would want to explore is that what sort of phenomena can be used or not just a phenomena what phenomena what various phenomena can be used that can result in this deflection and which electric quantity which electrical quantity can be associated uh, with the phenomena and what sort of a relationship can this be that is what sort of a relationship can be established between this electric quantity and the deflection okay let's see the various methods or various uh, principles through which a deflection can be achieved to measure a electrical quantity okay so the most simplest way see when you say when you want a deflection what you are basically saying is you want to generate a force okay and what you have is you have an electrical quantity on one hand you can add something in the instrument some other effect can be already present in, in, in the instrument that interacts with this electrical quantity and generates a force okay so the most simple concept is that the concept of a current carrying conductor moving a current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field so a current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field or a permanent magnetic field would lead to a force being produced in a direction a mutually perpendicular direction to the direction in which the current is moving and the direction in which a direction of the magnetic lines of force and this the direction of this the direction is magnitude of the force is given by the Fleming left hand rule and now so what we have here is that current in a moving conductor okay that is the first principle the next one is when you have a when you use a current now in this in the first case what we have is that the current that is flowing in this conductor in the movable conductor is what is um, causing well, what is, is the measuring is the current to be measured okay this is the current to be measured and that current is flowing through a conductor and that conductor is placed in a stationary Uh, a, a magnetic field produced by a stationary magnet okay on the other hand you can also have the current flow through a conductor and the conductor is wrapped around a core and this will generate the magnetic field and you can have a magnetic material 
moving in the this sort of a magnetic field and of course the because the, depending upon the magnetization of the material you can have an attractive force or a repulsive force towards the core okay and this attraction or repulsion is translated to a deflection okay so this is another set another way in which you can produce a deflection by starting with a current flowing uh, by a current flowing in some conductor okay and uh, let's see the other method so let's look at the third method in the so we have in the first method we had a stationary permanent magnet and a moving conductor in the second we have a moving ion or a moving uh, magnetic material and a stationary electromagnet the magnetic field is produced by an electromagnet or you can have both of them being an electromagnet so you have a st stationary electromagnet okay where which uh, whose magnet whose magnetic lines of force is produced by a current i1 that you can control and the moving part is another electromagnet is another is another coil whose current i2 is also controlled is also one of the inputs okay. and uh, so so like a station uh, like a stator and rotor in a motor the presence of this current carrying conductor in a magnetic field produced by a stationary electromagnet is going to cause a torque and that torque it will cause a deflection and of course you can use some control mechanism to arrest this deflection and and, it, and the amount of deflection will be probably proportional to something that is related to these two these two currents going further you can have uh, you can have both these current carrying coils being fixed and they produce a and and if they are close together there will be some mutual inductance and due to the mutual inductance you can create a emf and a torque in a third movable conductor okay and you you will using you will be basically using the induction principle to produce the deflection okay and since none of the current carrying conductors none of the current carrying conductors are moving there is no relative motion between two these two conductors so what you would eventually end up is whatever is the quantity being measured that will be proportional to the rate of movement of the actual moving conductor this sort of the induction principle is usually used in energy meters where uh, the total number of rotations will will uh, be proportional to the amount of energy being consumed and the rate of motion is proportional to the uh, power being consumed okay moving ahead based on the how what what is the directly what is the quantity that is causing the deflection the based on the working principle the instruments can be classified into direct measuring measure instrument measurement instruments uh, like the permanent pavement say a permanent magnet moving coil instrument which we'll see in today's lecture a moving an instrument that uh, uses the second principle that we had uh, talked earlier that is an electromagnet is there there is a stationary electromagnet and you have a conductor moving in that in the field of that electromagnet and the electrodynamometer instrument where you have two electromagnets powered by two currents both of which uh, are supplied by the user and there is no permanent magnet in this case and neither do you have a an iron 
piece, a moving iron. Okay, so these three type of instruments uh, measure current by actually having a deflection, having an indication that is directly related to the current. Okay, in contrast, you have other type of instruments like electrostatic instrument which is uh, basically used uh, uh, to measure high voltages you have thermal instrument and the hot fire instrument which are used to which use the uh, i square r law basically to measure the current i so by by seeing the how much heating is happening how much what is the heat capacity of the current uh, in heating a piece of wire we are basically relating the temperature change to the equivalent current okay so by indirect effect also uh, you can you can use indirect effects in certain cases uh, to measure the amount of current to measure an electric quantity okay so you also have indirect measurement instruments okay uh, moving further let's uh, start let's see how to identify these instruments or, or what is the basic principle of these instruments okay the first instrument that we'll talk about is the pmmc instrument which is which has a a current coil current carrying coil moving in a in the field of a permanent magnet so you have a u-shaped permanent magnet here and the current coil is the current carrying coil is wound around a soft iron core here okay and the movement of this uh, core will cause a deflection and that is being measured here okay and this sort of a movement this sort of a mechanism is called a Dasson wall movement and uh, it is basically used for dc measurement because the deflection is proportional is directly proportional to the amount of current that is being there so if you have an ac signal the deflection will go in both direction and so you will not be able to get any proper reading okay this is the symbol that is generally used to depict a pmmc meter okay and generally you will also see this sort of a, a symbol in the instruments that are used for dc measurement so this indicates that this is dc only ac can't be measured using this so if you have a pmmc meter usually you will see these two symbols on a pmmc meter moving ahead uh, the second principle that we had seen was that you have a fixed current 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 coil and you have one or more moving by pieces of soft soft iron okay they are move they will be moving in the field of this electromagnet generated by this current 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 carrying coil okay typically moving iron instruments can be used both for ac and for dc measurement because uh, irrespective of the direction of the current uh, the attractive or repulsive force uh, that is produced in this moving iron in the, in, in the moving iron the direction of that will not change so the attractive force will be, will be directly proportional to the only the magnitude of the current that is flowing and it can be it can be made in a manner that it is independent of the direction of the current okay so this is a symbol this is a symbol that you would see on a moving an instrument to indicate that it is a moving an instrument okay and if it is an ac only instrument you would see only a sinusoidal waveform and if it can respond to both ac and dc you see a symbol like this so this sort of identifying this sort of reading these symbols to uh, understand what is the type of the instrument what are the capabilities of the instrument is important from the point of a of a user because you should be able to choose the appropriate instrument which fits the specific purpose 
or the specific application that you are interested in. Okay. Moving ahead, the third type was the where you have both the coils, both the fixed and the moving coils being powered by currents. Okay, and this type of instrument is an electrodynamometer instrument because, because basically because it works on the principle of a motor. Okay, like a dynamometer. Okay, and this can be used both both for both AC and for DC measurement. And now the deflection here, since there are two currents powering the instrument, the deflection will be proportional to the product of this current, R1 cross I2. Okay, and since there are two currents, you can have both the currents feeding in separately or they can be feeding in with a common ground. So you would have either a three terminal or a four terminal device uh, in when you are when you are seeing an electrodynamometer type of instrument. Okay, and depending upon the type of core. Uh, an electrodynamometer can be represented using using one of these symbols where whether it is an iron code or an air code instrument okay and similar to this we also have other instruments like you have as i said earlier you have an induction type instrument which is generally used only for ec measurement where the torque is produced due to interaction of the field and current in two different coils and they are best used in energy energy meter okay and uh, since and they are integrating type instruments so you don't you are not really interested in the instantaneous measurement you are really interested in the integral of the measurement so you have power and you what you take out of the instrument is the number of revolutions and you get out energy so it is basically basically used mostly in energy meters it can be also used to measure power okay but the utility is uh, quite small in that case okay and you also have indirect measurement instruments like the thermal uh, type uh, instruments where uh, again it is used for AC measurement uh, and uh, and you can since uh, the waveform and this can be used in situations where you are not really sure what is the waveform of the signal that you have but you really want an RMS value so you can use a thermal instrument because the amount of heating the amount of I square R loss is basically proportional basically determined by the RMS value of the current because you have ice and the, the average value of the square is what you are what you're really needing so uh, so this type of thermal instruments can easily catch on the RMS value of the current without actually having any information or any presumption on the shape of the current waveform okay and uh, you also have electrostatic uh, instruments which are usually used for very low power but high voltage applications okay where uh, you want to measure a voltage without actually making any contact okay so this thermal electrostatic instruments and other uh, type of heat based or uh, in, uh, heat based instruments they can they would be handled in this course but to a much lesser extent than the other types of instruments the ones that we had seen earlier okay and these are the symbols that you would generally typically see in 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 the various types of instruments okay i'll also be sharing a sheet with all these symbols okay you can have a look at it okay now i've been saying that you have all these symbols let's take a, an example so this is the display panel 
of one of the AC ammeters that we have in one of the uh, electrical engineering labs. Let's see <coughs> what it says. So we have a set of symbols here. Okay, and let's see what we can read from that. Okay, so the first symbol says that it's a moving ion instrument. Okay, and this 1.0 says that uh, whatever is the reading that you see, there is a maximum possible error of 1% in that reading, whenever you can actually read it. Okay, and this symbol says that this instrument has to be put in the horizontal position. It has to be laid down on your table to take the measurement. So on the other hand, if you have this sort of a shape uh, written on the on the on the display panel, then that would mean that that instrument has to be put in a vertical position. Okay. Okay. In and in many instruments, you can you would have a star which indicates what is the maximum voltage to which it has been safely tested. Okay. So this there is a two written inside the star uh, here so which would mean that this ac ammeter has been tested for safety up to 2 kilowatts okay and of course this 50 hertz is uh, quite simple to understand that this is basically the frequency at which uh, this instrument is supposed to be used but anyway since it's a moving an instrument even if you don't stick to this particular frequency your readings are quite accuracy accurate but if you change the frequency too much uh, some other hysteresis effects that are seen that that are caused in that moving in that moving ion will start to dominate so though moving ion instruments uh, or ac instruments should be independent of the frequency of the waveform they are not completely independent so, so we'll look as we as we go through the course we would look about what are the effect, what are the frequency effects in this, and to what extent can an instrument be made robust with the frequency changes. Okay, now let's uh, concentrate on permanent PMMC or permanent magnet moving coil meter. Okay, as I said, this is an analog meter which is used for DC measurement, and it can uh, and this can be a part of many DC measuring, many analog DC meters. Uh, basically, we have uh, we have all we have seen that the force that is there it is somehow proportional to some current that is flowing in. Okay, uh, this this principle can be used to make the PMMC meter work as an ammeter, a voltmeter or even a ohm meter okay we will see how these things work out okay and in the last class we have in the not <laughs> the last class we have seen or in the class on the dynamic characteristic we have seen that uh, you would have a deflecting force that is in in every meter you will have a deflecting force that is produced by the input signal you have a controlling force that limits the magnitude of the deflection that is provided by a spring okay and you have a damping force that is uh, that is causing some friction okay so these three components would be there in a dc measuring in a dc meter it will also be there in an ac meter an analog D dc meter is what you will be looking at now Okay, so the working principle coming to the working principle of the PMMC meter, as I said earlier, when a current carrying coil is moving in a magnetic field, a force is produced in a direction that is mutually perpendicular to the direction of the field, the direction of the current and the field. Okay, so in a PMMC meter, you have a U shaped magnet and you have a the pole shoes being radial that is whatever may be the 
direction in which whatever may be the orientation of the coil it will always be perpendicular to the pole that it is facing you have a soft iron core that is uh, placed in the air gap between the pole shoes and you have the current carrying coil a copper coil which is wound around this core the pointer mechanism is connected to this coil and a spring is added to provide the uh, control force and the spring is attached to the fixed frame okay to reduce friction you use a setup the entire setup of the coil and the core is suspended via jewel bearing suspension like this so you have this coil and the core being suspended okay using jewels with using these bearings so that the friction is minimum at these locations where the actual actual reflection actual rotation happens okay so this is a, a picture of uh, one of the pmmc meters okay so now how does this work let's see now when the current passes through the coil it interacts with the magnetic field caused uh, of the permanent magnet and the force is produced okay this the magnet of this of the magnet of the force the, uh, is perpendicular to the direction of the current that is coming that is perpendicular to the direction of the current that is, and the current is in a direction that is perpendicular to the plane of this uh, presentation that it is coming out of the paper or going in the paper and the magnetic lines of force are in this direction okay so the uh, so the physical force that is acting is in this direction in these directions and you have the core being here so this eventually is going to produce a torque that is trying to rotate this entire core the soft iron core along with the coil that is bound around the core okay and now if you have a mechanism by which this the magnitude of this force can be captured then the pmmc meter would be capturing and measuring the current that is being that is flowing in the coil okay uh, now what we have seen is that we are using a soft iron core and <laughs> the magnetic field is radial in the air gap okay which would which would mean that the force that is being produced is actually given by b i n l sin alpha where alpha is the direction between the direction of flow of the current and the magnetic line the magnetic lines of force and since it's a radial magnet radial uh, the poles are radial then this would mean that this this angle is always 90 degrees okay so the force that is produced is just b i n times l and the torque that is produced will be uh, in, and on each end this will be equal to this distance okay it should, actually, it should actually be by two okay so it will be b by two times the force so that is b i n times l however you have torque acting on both the ends so this will be twice so this get cancelled out so basically you get and if you take l into b so the b is the width of the coil and l is the length of the coil uh, this is not the right this thing l so if you have a coil like this uh, l 
B is this direction and L is something that is going inside the paper here. Okay. So basically what you have here is if you take L times B to be A then uh, and if you have if you use a proportionality constant B and A is in the torque tau D is just G into I where I is the current flowing through the coil. Okay, now if there is no contracting force, the coil will start to spin like in a motor. That is definitely not desired. So you need a contracting force. And we have a spring in the PMNC meter that will give this restoring force. And as we know, the restoring force that is given by the spring will be proportional to the angle of deflection. So the tau C would be equal to K times theta but we already know that this is not enough we need something more so at this point of time um, uh, the ideally when these two forces are the same that is when gi is equal to k theta the <coughs> there should be no further deflection and uh, that would mean that the deflection will be proportional to the current However, this mechanism has some mass, which would mean that when the deflection is equal to the current, probably there is some residual vol uh, velocity, there is some theta dot. So, there will this will cause this to move further, there will be an excessive deflection and then there will be an excessive restoring force. So, you would have oscillations and continuous oscillations because this will which would mean that this pointer is moving like a pendulum with the center being the intended theta okay uh, so as we have seen in the last class so we need another force which will damp this oscillation and get it quickly to the intent to the actual theta which has to measure theta proportional to i which it has to settle to okay so we have seen this you will have sustained oscillation and you need something to damp these oscillations okay fortunately the mechanism that we have the setup that we have itself produces an additional effect that will cause this damping current to damping uh, torque to come into picture okay the damping torque is induced by the movement of the the movement of the coil in the magnetic field itself so we know that when a coil moves in a magnetic field then there would be um, a voltage induced in the coil okay just because of the motor motion and this with this voltage will be induced in a direction that will act to impede this motion okay and this voltage would be proportional to the speed at which the coil is moving so this e is proportional to the velocity v and it is given by this expression and uh, we know but we know that uh, v is the velocity at which this is moving and if the, if the entire distance between of the from of the the width of the coil was b okay the distance from the center is uh, just b by 2 okay and what we eventually end up is that this voltage the emf that is induced is again proportional to d theta by dt Okay, now if we assume that the resistance of the coil is R, then what we can say is that the current that is induced due to this EMF, due to this damping effect is given by G by R times D theta by DT. Okay, now which would mean that you have a damping uh, torque 
okay because uh, this this and this fa this itself acts interacts with the magnetic field and you get a damping torque that is gid and this damping torque is also um, resisting the motion Okay, let's say that this is g square by r and g square by r, let us say d. So what we have here is that the input current actually has to be uh, sufficient to power these three uh, effects. So it should cause some acceleration which will cause a deflection. It should also compensate for the restoring force and also for the damping. Okay, and we've already seen that if you have a equation a dynamical equation for an instrument to be described by second order uh, differential equation then we can use the parameters of a second order system to analyze that okay which you had seen in the last class okay and uh, the let's come to the pros and cons of the permanent magnet moving coil instrument since the deflection theta was proportional to the current the scale is linear okay if you use a low inertia instrument that is if the mass is low then a pmnc meter can have can be made to be highly sensitive okay since the current carrying coil that you have is mobile it is usually made of very thin wire and it will it will usually have very low resistance so because of low r it will also have low power consumption okay and since the permanent magnet that is being used is not an electromagnet it will have a constant magnetic field which means that there is no hysteresis also okay his through losses like hysteresis losses which are present in other ac instruments on electromagnetic and instruments that use electromagnetism uh, or, or electromagnets that effect is not there in the pmnc meter and this same instrument can be configured to work at multiple ranges by by using appropriate series and shunt resistance we will look at this property uh, in subsequent lectures okay the problems that can arise in a PMNC meter, the one glaring disadvantage is that it cannot be used for AC measurement. Okay. Now, a lot relies, the success of the PMNC meter relies a lot on the shape of the permanent magnet. It should be radial. Okay, the pole shoe should be radial and so the magnetic geom magnet geometry is very important and you need a what you in this you are making the current pass through a spring and then through the entire coil and this is how so you have a current and the current should pass through a spring which is providing, providing the control force the restoring force and this and then it passes through the entire coil and this coil is what is present in uh, what is being uh, what is moving in the field of the point magnet okay and because of because of this restriction that you need a current carrying coil springs that may cause the mechanism to be expensive okay and since the uh, control force is from a spring and the spring is also carrying uh, current it is subject to heat okay so temperature variations would affect the spring constant can affect the spring constant and either if you make it robust if you uh, make the spring from a material that is robust against temperature variations obviously it can uh, it will cause the expense part okay and if it is not so robust it is subject it, it can be subject to temperature variations and that will reduce the reliability of the instrument okay and we have seen that uh, to reduce the friction we were using jewel bearings okay to mount 
to attach or attachments to connect this uh, moving mechanism to the frame of the instrument okay and this bearings may cause some additional friction but usually it is not so much but anyway that is one of the disadvantages that you will have of a pmmc instrument okay so coming to the reference that can be used we can you can look into chapter 6 and uh, 8 of uh, this book on electrical and electronic instruments okay and you can look under chapters on electromechanical indicating instruments on ammeter voltmeters you would see this okay and this same uh, chapter would be used in multiple lectures in subsequent lectures also this will become relevant okay so with that uh, we come to the end of this particular lecture okay uh, thank you for your patience